Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial series where we're going to cover a lot about physics and I thought well a better fun way of doing that would be to make it as a pinball game. So we're going to do a pinball game in the guise of a physics tutorial sort of series. So let's take a look and get started on making our pinball table and how to launch something like pinball. Okay so I've got a blank project here because we don't need any of the character stuff. Um, let's set up some basics first of all. So we're going to go ahead and create the game folder. And in there, we're going to create our blueprint folder. Our system folder. And in our system folder, we're going to create our game mode. And the reason why we do all this is so we got full control all over the game that we want to make. Not necessarily super important for what we're trying to do right now in this first episode, but it's something that you're going to think about later on um, as you develop your games. So let's just set up our player controller and game mode here. Inside my game mode here, we're going to just turn on the player controller to be the one we just made. But what's important in this is that we want to make sure the default pawn class is set to none. We don't want really to get spawned with anything because um, we're going to be controlling things elsewhere. Uh, inside our systems folder as well, we'll make an input system. So inputs. And pinball is pretty simple. So we're going to have left button. And then we're going to have another one called the right button. And then we're going to have another one called the launcher. Depending on how, like, what kind of pinball game you're trying to make, you may have more buttons, but we're going for the stereotypical uh, pinball layout. So one button on the side for the left, one button on the right that handles the flippers, and then the launch plunger that you pull back and launch out. Speaking of the launcher, one thing we can do in here is we can change how the triggers will trigger so in here we're going to go to triggers and we're going to change this down to a hold and release so basically with that in mind we can now say if the hold the plunger button for a certain amount of time in order for it to actually trigger uh, when you release it and then what we could do as well with that is we can actually measure how long you've held it for and clamp it obviously and give you a different strength in the launch of that but for now let's keep it pretty simple as such now we're going to make the input mapping context and this is what ties all these together so let's do input mapping context imc and let's call it default and we're going to map in our buttons here so left button is going to be, let's say, uh, let's, let's do it like pretty well here. Let's do a left control for left button. And let's do a right button as right control. So we're going to play it purely on the keyboard. And then over here, we're going to do the launcher as the space bar. That'd do. That'd be interesting to try out. Okay, so now we're gonna need to be, now we've got our input set uh, defined and assigned. We need to go to our player controller and tell them to turn on basically. So on the begin play in our player controller, we're gonna get the enhanced input system. Okay, and we're going to the player controller one on that, and we're gonna plug in self. And then from our blue pin here, we can drag out and we can now do add mapping context to assign that IMC that we just made. Perfect. Okay, now to make the board. Now, the pinball board is pretty simple. We need to first of all just make the shape that we want to do here. And I'm just going to use the modding mode. Why not? Uh, we're going to do a box. And let's change the width of this to be, I'm doing it quite large. Let's do 1,000. Uh, maybe do a bit longer than that. We'll do maybe 2,000. Sure. 
And depth-wise, we'll do 8,000. Maybe maybe not that much. Let's do 6,000 there. And we'll increase the width here to 3,000. Yeah. And height will leave us alone as 100. Okay. The accept. Okay. And we want to put the walls on this thing. So let's go ahead and do that. Change the width there to just 100. There is our wall. Make sure that's all flush. Perfect. Okay, let's do another one. Now, for the launcher, we need to have it assigned. Uh, to a channel to be able to launch it up. So we're going to just bring that across there. In fact, let me just change this to 100. Ooh. It'd be a lot easier to space it out. So our pimple is going to be probably 100 wide. So we want a gap like that. Or a little channel like that. Now we don't want it to be the full length because we actually want it to go into the table at some point. So let's bring that down. And place it in there. Oh. Okay. Next up, we're going to change this now around. That's going to be 3,000, and that's going to be 100. And we're not going to worry about the bottom channel just yet, where the pinball goes if it fails to uh, meet the target. Not worried about that too much. Accept that. Duplicate that up. Bring that up here. Like that. And that's not looking too bad. Okay, so with our pinball desk, we need to incline it because pinball desks are. Um, I've done a little bit of research, found out what a real life pinball play field is angled at, and it does vary, but we're going to do a six and a half degree incline for our table here. And if, what I want to do is I want it to rotate and attach everything with it. So when I rotate it, the whole thing goes. So with all our walls and everything here, we're going to parent them to the playfield base itself so we're going to drag that into the outliner onto that first box we made there so when i'm selecting this box and i rotate it they will go with it so i said i want to incline it by six and a half degrees so this is the y-axis the green one so we're going to do here 2.5 wrong way let's do negative 0.65 there we go obviously you don't want it clipping for this landscape we actually need a landscape but Keep it simple like that. Okay, there is our pinball table. Let's just save our map. Pinball. And let's put that into a map folder. Like that. Okay, next up is the pinball itself. We need to make a little pinball and launch up in the air. So, as I said, we need this, left the gap here of 100. What I might actually do is move this slightly out so we've got a bit more free space here to move slightly. So, we've got snapped to 10. I'm just going to move it a couple of notches along, like that. Okay. Next, I'm going to make a blueprint. And I'm making a blueprint for the pinball rather than just a simple sphere is because later on, we need to do things like detection for scoring points. So, it's a lot easier if it's a blueprint. So we create a blueprint. It's just going to be an actor. And we call it pinball. And in here, we're going to add a object. We're going to add a sphere. Now, whenever we're making a physics object, it's very important to note that what happens when you enable physics is it detaches the physics object from its parent. 
and then it rolls around on the floor. So the pairing does actually move, it's just the physics part of it will. So in this case, if I left it like this, this would be pretty bad because if I detach the sphere from the C default scene root, it will look like it's working fine. But when I do something like get actor location, all it's going to do is return this default scene roots location, which hasn't moved. So I want to make sure that the sphere here, the thing that's going to have physics on it, is the root. Okay. So I'm going to turn on simulate physics. And you're good. So let's chuck that into our scene here. And... A little bit like that, and we want to see it simulate. We can go down and simulate it, and we should see the ball roll into a position. Perfect. Okay, now to launch it. So we're going to create a launcher uh, blueprint. So let's go BP launcher, and this will have some visuals to it, but we're not really fussed about that. All we need to know is when the ball is in this location and we tell it to launch, we want it to kick the ball out. Basically apply physics to anything that's inside of that uh, area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a sphere collision. And that's gonna be the area that we're checking for when we're launching. So let's change the sphere radius here to be increase it to like 50. And we're gonna go to the event graph. And in here, we're going to create a launched event. So let's go to a custom event, launch. And on the launch event, we need to know what's inside our sphere and all physics objects inside that, we want to apply a force to it. So let's take our sphere out, get overlapping actors. And the class we're looking for here we can use the uh, basic actor class if you're thinking of having other things in there, but at the very least, you want the pinball in there. And then for each of those, we're going to get the root component, which is like the, the one we just changed the sphere object of. And we want to make sure this is a primitive component because you can't apply physics to a scene component. You can only apply it to a, a primitive component. So we need to cast this root component here out to a primitive component. So get cast a primitive component. And from there, we're going to apply a launch to it. So to do that, we can do it in impulse. Now impulses are like a flick. It's a big kick for which direction you want it to go and what strength you want it to go. Now, this isn't the, the end result of what we're going to be doing with our pinball because there's other things we want to do to it later on. But this is the quick turnaround thing that we're going to mess about with to get this working. So on impulse here, we want to get direction of the launcher. So the direction of the launcher, we're going to determine by an arrow to make it really easier for us as a developer to see which way it's pointing. So I'm going to drag the arrow out. Make sure it's facing the X coordinate because that's typically what you want to do. And with the arrow here, we're going to get the forward vector of it. We're going to multiply this by the strength of our impulse. So the strength of the impulse could be whatever you like. I'm going to convert to a float. And this will take some variations to get figure out what you want to do. Um, and this will eventually become a variable that we'll get from the launcher itself. But as I said, we just want to see it launch right away. So let's start off with 20,000. Let's see where we're at with that. So with launch here, we just want to basically trigger launch on begin overlap. So we're going to do a little delay for two seconds and then call launch. Not worry about inputs or anything like that. We just want to see the physics ball go. Let's take it out. Oh, it's spawned as a spectator cam. Let's uh, spawn with a different camera. Let's pick a different camera. Let's 
but that would help if we could see what's going on. So spring arm. And then with it selected, we're going to choose camera to attach the camera to the end. And we're just going to rotate that up something like that and give it a good arm length of, let's say, 2000. Just that as we want. And on the event graph of this on begin play, we're going to tell it to just assess it straight away. So I'm going to get the player controller and we're going to set the view target of our player controller to this camera. So self. And then don't forget to put it actually into the scene itself and then you're good. Okay. Turn it around. There we go. Let's get that a bit better zoomed. So the 20,000 may not be enough, which it probably wouldn't be. So that clearly isn't doing its thing. So we need to give it a bit more power. So a good way of getting power is by giving it force based upon the mass of the object as well. So if you want it to ignore the mass of the object, you're going to take the primitive component and get the mass of it and you're going to multiply this again by the mass let's see what that does oh i just realized i haven't put the launcher into the scene that would be help wouldn't it so let's do that we'll make it the same angle as our table here so minus 6.5 And we're going to rotate it in the Z there. That would have helped. Anyway, let's see how this goes. It goes. Yeah, a bit too much now. <laughs> so let's go back to the launcher there. Change that 20,000 down. So I don't want it to really take account of the mass for the launch. So let's bring it down to 1,000. Okay, need a little bit more. Okay, let's let's go halfway between that. Let's do ten thousand. That looked like a good one. And to see it actually drop into the scene, all we need to do is put a little bouncer on here to make it bounce into the scene. So a little angle will do just fine. So let's just drag out one of these. And that'll do for now. Hopefully we'll see the ball come back down in the center point here. There we go. Okay, so that's all about impulse. So there you go. All about impulse impulse is like a flick remember so in this case a launcher is great for this and you'll see that in pinball there's a lot of that so we're doing lots of different things with uh, a flick kind of style um movement inside of here so in next part we're going to start building out things like flippers and other things inside the pinball field itself to make it bounce off of other things little bouncers all that sort of good stuff that you find in a pinball game so you can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to everyone watching and supporting the channel. It couldn't be possible without you guys. So thank you again so, so much. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.